Hey guys, this is Kyle with Horn Baker Acres. Um, on today's video, we're, I'm going to kind of go over um, a project that I've been looking at for a while. Um, I've got one colony that was, uh, that's currently three brood chambers deep. And the reason why it's that way is I actually had uh, one colony go queenless during winter, but it's still a really strong colony, so I decided to just combine them, um, which made for a very large colony. And, and now that temperatures are starting to warm up here in Arizona, um, obviously they're going to want to swarm soon. Uh, so I'm going to use that opportunity to really increase the population of my, my apiary, the number of colonies that I have. Uh, before I get in the video, uh, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all of our followers on Facebook. You guys have been truly amazing with the support that you've given us. Um, we're still very much hobby beekeepers, uh, very small time operation, but obviously the, the dream is to uh, turn this into to something much larger than what it is now, um, with the primary focus on, on our bees, the, the welfare of them. And then another the aspect is educating people um, using our own experiences. One thing that I will say that when I do these videos, it's from my perspective, my point of view. And one thing I've always said um, about beekeeping is that it is full of opinions. And uh, all of them are right. Me meaning that uh, there are dozens of ways to accomplish a given task in beekeeping. Um, and because beekeeping is such a passionate hobby, um, Beekeepers tend to focus in on their method being the only correct method. Um, I don't think that's an accurate statement at all. That's just, again, my opinion. So in these future videos, you're going to see my methods, and that's all it is, my method. I'm, I'm learning along the way. Uh, I don't think that my method is the right method. It's just the method that I've chosen to use, and, and a lot of it's experimentation for me. Um, so again, today we're just going to build some mating nukes out of this really large colony. I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Uh, if you enjoy the video, please uh, comment below, like, share, subscribe, and if you see a problem with my method, feel free to give a comment below. Just, um, just be kind about it, obviously, with this being YouTube, people uh, uh, tend to, to reply very passionately, and I understand that. Just keep it respectful, and uh, again, the goal here is sharing information. Um, also, before I begin, if you're in Arizona, make sure to check out Arizona Backyard Beekeepers on Facebook. It's uh, one of the groups I'm part of, and uh, on, on that group we have uh, experience from beekeepers that have one, two colonies to beekeepers that have been keeping bees for 40 years and done it on the commercial side, managed thousands of colonies, and so we have experience of all ranges, and uh, one thing that holds true across all ranges of beekeeping on that group is the kindness. Um, for the most part, that, that group is just truly kind and willing to share their information experience and help you get hands on. So again, make sure to check out Arizona Backyard Beekeepers on Facebook. And uh, again, I hope you enjoy this video. Okay guys, this is the, uh, the hive in question that we're going to try and do some severe splitting on today. Um, first thing we want to do is I want to make sure that I separate out the, the frames that I want to keep in the hive. So I can see what kind of extras I have. I did a count on this hive um, sometime last week. I know I had at least nine frames of brood in there. Um, I'd like to keep at least four frames of brood in there if I can. Uh, we won't really know until we get into it. So let's go ahead and get into it. as little smoke as possible today, so that way when I do pull frames for um, the splits, it's, they're going to have plenty of bees in the frame. So I'm only going to really use the smoke just to move bees out of the way. I don't really care about how aggressive they get. Now I'm just moving some bees out of the way. That way I can push some frames over and pull some out. Alright, so I know this is probably going to be just a full honey frame. 
So this can go in one of the boxes. And it's likely that I'll be moving some frames back and forth. So we do have a clean cup here. If you want to come in and look, which is odd on a nectar frame, but we have a clean cup. There's no egg in it. Um, but they're at least starting to build those. It wouldn't surprise me today if I found a bunch of clean cells on the storage frame. Because these ladies are, especially with the recent warm weather, they're definitely ready to swarm. Good brood frame. Now, one thing I'm doing is I'm really wanting to find my queen. So that way I know she's in the correct hive. She's an unmarked queen. So she's not impossible to spot. I see her almost every time I inspect this hive. But the biggest thing is I don't want to accidentally move my queen over to one of the splits. So that's one frame of brood in the new hive, in the existing hive rather. Okay, so we got a couple swarm cells on this one. Here, honestly, I can't tell if there's anything in it. By the shape of them, there's probably something in it. I can't really tell. So, so let's see. No, nothing in that one. There was an egg in that one. So that's okay. We're gonna just smash those two. We're gonna leave this one, and I'm gonna go get my mating nuke and probably put this one over since it already has clean cells on it. Right, so for now I'll just set it in this box. This is a maybe frame. I might be moving that one. Aspect to this is when moving frames to make splits, obviously, you want frames with eggs so that way they have an opportunity to build a new queen from the egg. And I'm sorry, my queen was marked because there she is right now. Um, so, you want eggs on that frame so that way there's an opportunity for them to raise out a new queen from that egg. However, you really don't need that many eggs. You only need a handful of eggs on the frame. You more so want ready to hatch brood um, for your splits. And the reason for that is um, you want that population to be boosted as much as possible, as soon as possible. So if you're gonna move frames over, always make sure that you move over lots of about to hatch brood. So, I think what we'll do is we're going to move an empty frame, a drawn frame rather, in the middle of the brood nest, give the queen more spots to lay. There we go. Some old drawn combs, I let them rot out there today.
this also gives me an opportunity to clean this box out a little bit. Clean all the purplets off of it. So while I'm doing this, I should probably take a moment and explain this mating nuke. I really have to give a shout out to David at Barnyard Bees. Um, he uses all two frame mating nukes for the most part. And he made me realize how beneficial they are that he talks about it. I'm not going to go into great detail about why this system is great. I'm going to tell you to go to his videos. So that way, you know, give him some credit where credit is due. Um, again, it's Barnyard Bees. Check out his YouTube channel. He talks in depth about these two frame mating nuke systems. Um, my system's not exactly like his. I have a dual two frame mating nuke. So the way I set it up is there's an entrance on either side. And I have a divider board right down the middle. So this is gonna essentially be two two frame mating nukes. Um, one entrance on either side for each side of the mating nuke, basically. And for me, it just it's easier to build, less material. I don't, um, and it's basically a five-frame nuke that I've modified into two two-frame nukes. So this side out, and this in, and so this is the one that already had some queen cups on it, some emerging brood. Go ahead and stick that in there. And then we're probably before we're done shake more bees into both sides. So we have plenty of bees. Um, right there. So the next same thing over here is Just have smoke causing them to move a little bit. I don't need them to move a whole lot. Just enough to move out of the way, not to be crushed. But I want them to remain on those brood frames so that way when I take the brood frames out, um, there's plenty of bees clinging to them. So this is going to be a honey frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Shake that in there. Shake some bees off in a bit. Add into their population. On a side note, um, I see a lot of people uh, shaking brood frames to make sure that they get plenty of young nurse bees in there. My only issue with that is those brood frames have larvae that's that's floating in. Um, in the royal jelly and as you shake it around you very well could shake that larvae loose and they could drown because of the way that their biology is designed they have a for lack of better terms breathing port on one side of their head and it's facing up in the royal jelly you shake it too much the larvae could roll over and drown in the royal jelly is it a huge concern as far as in the grand scheme of things probably not but it's enough concern for me that I try not to shake fruit frames if I don't have to. So, here we go. Here's another. So there's eggs in this one. Is it right? No, that might have been just a glare.
with eggs. So this one can be moved over. This will be our, our second mating move. Get another one just in case. they get a laying queen in there. It's about 30 days-ish before I should start seeing any eggs in, in any of these mating, mating colonies. If we mate, if all goes well, it's a big if. And they're pulling a nectar frame. Box I can clean up. So there's, there's two things that you need to really consider um, when basically queens like this is two items that are much, much needed, and that's pollen and nectar. Um, you need a, a lot of food stores for healthy queens. So each one of these mating newts is going to get a high top feeder for the nectar, um, sugar syrup. Numbers. Make sure that there's plenty of pollen in there. So I'm gonna take one of these old drawn out combs that I let the bees rob out of nectar the other day. And if I'm not losing my mind over here, um, I'm gonna fill it full of pollen basically, and that's the other frame that I'm gonna put in there. there you Oh, 
Sound substitute, which I'm sure many of you have seen and used and love and all that kind of stuff. So I don't need very much, but just like that, I'm going to sprinkle it on top. A little more. Put it on there for now, so that way we don't have bees dive bombing into it. But that's all I'm going to do. That's enough to give them a decent pollen supply while they're trying to build out these queens. So, that side's done. That's side number one. I think I'll probably make a video specifically on these mating nukes at some point in the near future. But, so that way I can further explain it. Also, I'm trying to choose frames that are not fully drawn out. So that way, it gives them something to do, somewhere to build. Um, they don't want to swarm right away. It gives me a little time uh, to keep checking on them, stuff like that. So. likely pull all that back out at some point and rearrange it how they see fit. These seem to be never completely happy with how you have things. But they know far better than I do, so. Alright, so that mating nuke is done. The last thing that I will do before we leave is throw a strap of tape around it. Take this one, put it in the truck. Get it out of the way. Hey guys, I'm back. So, I hope you enjoyed uh, that little segment of our, our video. Uh, unfortunately, I had to cut it short on my memory card. Um, crapped out on me basically, it got full. Uh, but you, you saw the most, most of the process. Um, in the video you saw that I've made um, two mating nukes out of a single dual mating nuke setup. I ended up making a total of three. Um, there weren't as many egg frames in there as I had hoped. Uh, but it is what it is, so that's three new colonies. So that kind of shows you with that system, and again that system that I've kind of uh, learned from David Barnyard Bees. I'm not sure that he's the creator. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's not. There's very few new ideas in beekeeping, but um, he truly shares the information in a, in a way that is very beneficial, um, easy to learn, and he explains it fully. So again, check out his channel, uh, Barnyard Bees, on YouTube, um, and he'll explain fully about the two-frame mating nuke system. But uh, So as you can see, I, I ended up making three new mating nukes, which is a potential for three new colonies out of a total of three frames of brood, and, and that's not a lot of resources. Uh, plus, I shook some bees in there, but that's not a lot of resources to make it with essentially three new splits from one colony. Um, we'll see if it works out. Again, this is just an experiment for me. So, what I did um, after that video is, obviously, I cleaned everything up, I put the, the lids on it, I taped those mating nukes so that way the lids stay on. Uh, those lids are fairly narrow, and we get some pretty decent winds here in Buckeye. So I take the lids on and then I took them out to my mating yard. Uh, a note on choosing your mating yard and, and the reason why you choose a mating yard a certain way. Uh, there's, there's a few things that you want to look for. Um, geographically, some of the, the features of the land. Um, look for an area that has sig uh, significant changes in the land. Meaning right up against a brush line, right up against a roadway, something that makes it unique looking from, from the air. And, and the reason for that is when this uh, queen hatches out, um, she's going to go on her, her mating flight. And that's going to be the only time that she really leaves the colony. And, and so she has to be able to find her way back to the colony. And uh, it's best if you make that easier for her by, by putting these mating nukes 
in an area uh, that is vastly different than any other areas or has some sort of significant feature. Um, if you ever made a nukes surrounded by crop fields, then put them underneath a tree, to where it's the only tree in that, in that area. Um, so that way it's, it's easier for the mated queen to find her way back. Uh, another aspect is you want to make sure there's other colonies in the area because she can't mate if there's no drones in the area. Uh, the drones being the male bees, obviously. So my mating yard um, is probably about a quarter mile um, from a few commercial hives and a few fellow Arizona backyard beekeepers hives. I'm sure their colonies are producing drones by now. Um, the rule of thumb when you're setting up mating nukes, uh, you want to have them anywhere between a quarter and a half a mile from other colonies. And, and the reason for that is that one of the ways that a colony prevents a virgin queen from mating what, with what is essentially her brothers, the, the drones within her hive, is that she flies further than the drones do to go to what we call a drone congregation area. It's where all the mating takes place. You can research on your own further into that. Um, so you want to have the mating yard further away um, from the rest of your colony. So that way, uh, when this virgin queen flies further out, she'll meet up with these drones that are in about the same area. So, so my mating yard has, has uh, commercial co uh, colonies in the area, along with some hobby beekeepers in the area. Um, and then the other aspect is with these mating nukes, you don't want to have them right, you know, side, if you have several of them, you don't want to have them side by side. Again, it has to do with the, the virgin queen or the now mated queen finding her way back to her specific colony. Um, so the way I set it up is, is my two mating nukes, my two dual mating nukes, are about six feet apart. Um, and I don't know if you notice in the, in the video or not, but they're, they have different colored entrance discs, plus they have a number on it. These are all methods that I use to set up to make that particular side of the colony look different than the rest. Um, a lot of people that, that mate queens all the time or rear queens all the time, uh, a lot of times they'll set up their mating nukes facing in all different directions, um, which is a, a good method. Um, obviously, I only, I only was able to pull three mating nukes worth, so I had two boxes. Um, so I wasn't that concerned whether there's space far enough, <coughs> excuse me, far enough apart. So looking forward from here, um, what happens next is in about a week's time, about seven days, I'll go back into those colonies and I'll check to see if I have capped queen cells. Um, from the time that that queen's, uh, what's going to turn into a queen, that the egg um, is laid, it takes about eight days for her cell to be capped. Um, keep in mind that the bees may choose an older egg. Um, the reason for that is so it takes about three days for an egg to hatch into a larvae and for the first three days every larvae, about three days, every larvae is fed what's called royal jelly which is a, a substance that the nurse bees secrete from their head. Um, so it's a substance actually created by the bees and uh, all larvae is fed this royal jelly what kind of turns uh, a queen into a queen instead of a worker is the worker bees at that point after those first three days of royal jelly are fed bee bread which, which is basically a mixture of pollen and, and nectar. Um, the queen is not. Uh, she is fed royal jelly throughout her entire larval state um, and that is kind of what turns her into a queen, what activates her ovaries um, it's the, the lack of this bee bread, this uh, pollen and nectar mixture is what turns her into a queen. Um, so again, in, in about seven days, um, I'll, I'll uh, go back in there and, and like I said, because of the varying ages, um, they could choose a, uh, an egg that's, or now a larva, that's up to six days old, so it could be capped a lot sooner. Um, but within seven, eight days, I should see some capped queen cells in there. I wouldn't be surprised if there's several capped queen cells in those colonies when I go back. So what I'll do is um, I'll probably destroy all but two queen cells. Uh, the reason for that is out of fear of, of swarming, basically, is um, I don't want too many queens hatched out at once because um, they might swarm immediately if they see too many queen cells, especially at varying ages of queen cells. So I'll crush all but two queen cells per mating nuke. 
And then when that virgin queen hatches out, she'll seek out any um, queen cells, existing queen cells. And with the help of worker bees, uh, she'll tear into the side of the queen cell and kill what is basically her sister uh, inside that queen cell. And you know, she'll kill off the competition. And then from there, so again, you know, in about a week I'll check to make sure there's queen cells. If all is good from there, I'll button it back up. And then I'll check, I won't mess with it again for the, um, until day 30-ish. Um, about 30 days from now, I'll go back in there. And that's about when I should expect to see uh, eggs from this newly mated queen. Um, I should be able to go in there, the queen should have already gone on her mating flight and mated properly and should have processed um, uh, the semen from the drones and then at that point she should be laying fertilized eggs and then um, if I see that then we're good to go. Um, on a side note with those two frame mating nukes, the reason why you use these two frame mating nukes versus the much smaller mating nukes that the commercial guys use. Um, one issue that we have is when the queen returns from her mating flight, a lot of times, in fact almost every time, she'll bring back a bunch of bees with her. A bunch of bees could be hundreds of bees that kind of follow her and then go into the colony with her. So you can imagine that that colony fills up very quickly. And if you use a really small mating nukes, um, that can overfill that small mating nuke and they can swarm immediately. With this two frame mating nuke, it's a little bit larger, um, gives room to expand gives me more time so that way I don't end up missing the day basically and she, my new mated queen, ends up swarming off. From there, if I have a mated uh, queen in there, then I'll move those two framers into five frame nukes and then raise them out from there. One of the concerns, especially here in Arizona, is the Africanized honeybee population. Uh, so I'm essentially possibly going to be creating heavily aggressive uh, colonies by doing this method. The reason why I'm, I'm starting now and creating my own queens now is as a temporary fix. Right now, uh, queens for purchase are just not available. Uh, mated queens are just not available at this time. Um, so instead of missing out on opportunity to build colonies, I'm going to go ahead and make my own queens and uh, build these colonies. And then once the mated queens become available, then I'll replace all these queens and that will make them back into docile colonies that I can use for my, my program. So that's it basically. Um, we'll see how it goes from here. I'll likely post a, a video update upon the conclusion of this. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video, learned something. Um, again, I, I welcome comments, positive or negative, on my method. Um, and again, this is just my opinion, just my method. There are tons of di different ways of doing it. I don't think really any of them are wrong as long as you're keeping bees and and actually going into your hives, I think you're, you're doing something beneficial. So as always, uh, like, share, subscribe our YouTube channel. Also check us out on Facebook, it's uh, Hornbaker Acres LLC on Facebook. Uh, like, share, subscribe there as well. And uh, again, check out David at Barnyard Bees, his YouTube channel, and check out Arizona Backyard Beekeepers on, on Facebook. Uh, both amazing uh, groups to be part of, or, or you know, the channel is amazing to follow, and the group's amazing to be part of. So. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Take care.